So the room is dark today because we're talking about some scary subject matter, right Mabel? In yesterday's video, I briefly mentioned energy balance and how this relates to calories. Then I realized, oh no, calories are scary. So it seems like a lot of people these days are somewhat afraid of calories. They're either afraid of eating them or afraid of even talking about them, discussing them, learning about them. A lot of people are afraid of calories that don't even know what they are. They associate calories with fitness culture and with obsessing about food, but really that's not what calories are. Calories are much simpler than that. They don't have emotion. They are actually just a unit of measurement. And I'm here to tell you today that you don't need to be afraid of calorie. It's a word. Calorie is just a name for something. And to quote Hermione Granger, fear of a name only increases fear of the thing itself. So let's quickly define calorie so we're both on the same page. Calorie with a lowercase c is defined as the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. So calories with a lowercase c, those are like the millimeters of calories. We don't often count in those. Nobody measures foods in little calories. And on food labels, that's why you see calories with an uppercase c. Calories with an uppercase C is defined as the energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water, one degree Celsius, equal to 1,000 small calories and often used to measure the energy value of foods. Just to make measuring easier for humans, we multiplied everything by 1,000 and measure in kilocalories, but we just call it calories because that's easier. And these calories are literally energy. It's literally motion. When calories are burned, it's because processes are happening. It's because body temperatures are changing. Limbs are moving. Calories are being burned, it's all energy. And when calories are being consumed, the same is true. There's energy in that food. It's all some magical flow of energy. The reason your life persists is because energy is coming in and out of you. There is a delicate balance that you're allowed to track through a system of calories, or not. But either way, the calories are there. And of course, you don't want to just hyper-focus on calories because there's much more to the whole health equation than just pinpointing calories because a lot of what you do affects your calories out. And today, we're going to talk about calories out. How does our body burn these calories? I'm eating calories, I'm eating the ice creams, I'm eating the tacos, I'm eating the pizzas. I know these foods have calories, right? But what happens with them once they're in my body? Where do these calories go? Every day your body burns a specific amount of calories and the leftover calories can get stored as body fat or muscle tissue. And depending on how you're training and how severe of a calorie surplus this is, it will be distributed differently among fat mass and and muscle mass. And essentially what most people want to do is to get that calorie burn pretty close to that calorie consumed so that you can maintain your weight. And if you want to lose weight, obviously you want to burn a few more calories than you're eating. And the allocation of those calories that we burn go into four different areas. And lucky for us, I already made an infographic on my Instagram that breaks down these four different areas of calorie allocation. So there's NEAT, there's EAT, there's TEF, and there's BMR. Your body burns more calories from getting a good night's sleep than it does from running a mile. And that is the magic of BMR. Your basal metabolic rate accounts for about 60 to 70% of your calorie burn. Most of the calories that you burn each day are a mere result of your body's efforts to stay alive, to keep the organs functioning and the blood pumping, to keep the brain thinking and the heart beating. Your BMR is always burning calories in the background no matter what. If you're just laying on a bed doing nothing but breathing, BMR is still hard at work. Most of the calories calories you burn each day are going to be burned no matter what. Next, let's talk about the thermic effect of food. And this counts for about 10% of your daily calorie burn. This includes chewing, digestion, and even going number two. The thermic effect of food basically relates to everything that has to happen in order for your body to utilize the energy that's coming in. It's that conversion process from energy out there to energy in here, and then also regarding some of the energy that goes back out, out there, you know what I mean. And to get some bonus points with the thermic effect of food, you wanna increase your protein and fiber consumption because protein is the highest thermic effect macronutrient. The more protein you eat, the more calories you burn from the thermic effect of food. Paired with the muscle building effects of protein, it makes high protein protein dieting, a pretty effective strategy. Whether your goal is to build muscle or burn body fat, protein is usually your friend. That's why I have a ton of other videos about protein already made that I'll link in the description below. I'm not gonna talk your ear off about protein today. And you can also kind of boost your thermic effect of food by consuming more fiber, but that just means more of the calories coming in are passing right through your body and going straight out. That's kind of a gray area. Now let's talk about that thing that first comes to mind when I mention burning calories. Eat. Exercise activity thermogenesis. This accounts for about 5 to 15% of your daily calorie burn. And these are the calories that you're burning through actual 
actual planned exercise activities. Lifting weights, cardio sessions, whatever. You got it on your schedule, you're going out there to burn some calories. Mabel does boxing, that's how she burns calories. Sorry. And you burn way less calories through exercise than you burn through your basal metabolic rate. However, in the long run, if you're on the kind of training program that causes you to build muscle mass, slowly over time, that's going to increase your basal metabolic rate because muscle tissue is expensive tissue. It costs more calories every day to sustain muscle mass than it does to sustain fat mass. So you may not burn more calories acutely through exercise, but if you're on the right training program, you will burn more calories in the long run by building muscle mass. Now let's move on to that surprise surprising one, that one that's kind of lurking in the background but actually playing a pretty huge role in the equation. NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This accounts for about 15 to 25 percent of your daily calorie burn. Most people burn more calories from unplanned exercise than they do from the planned stuff. NEAT is just the mundane everyday tasks that we all do like yawning, waving your arms around while you're sitting, taking out the trash, folding the laundry, doing the dishes, living your life, just walking around. And my favorite way to measure this is through daily steps. We burn considerably more calories from walking throughout the day than we do from going to the gym and getting our workouts in. It's crazy. So what this means is that at the end of the day, your unplanned NEAT activity might be your best friend in terms of burning more calories. And with that, Mabel's out of here. She's like, Dad, it's getting late. I think they know what calories are by now, but to quickly recap, calories are just a unit of measurement that measures the flow of energy. If more energy flows into your body than flows out of your body, you will gain weight over time. If more energy comes out of your body than goes into your body, you will lose weight over time. That's just how energy flow works. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It needs to end up somewhere. After it is consumed, it will either be burned or stored. And no matter what, your basal metabolic rate is going to burn a majority of the calories, typically followed by NEAT, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis, unless you're on some wild all-day workout training plan where you might be burning more calories through exercise than you are through NEAT, but you'd have to be pretty dedicated. Then at the bottom where we burn the least calories each day are through the thermic effect of food and through actual planned exercise, funny as it is. And if you wanna hack the system a little bit, know that things like sleeping better, eating more protein, and walking more are your best friends in terms of exporting energy in strange but effective ways. So don't be afraid of calories, guys. You can't live without them. You gotta live with them. Whether you want to admit it or not, you are eating and burning calories every day, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't obsess over them. Don't pretend they're not real. I just want you to know what they are, and knowledge is power. I'm making a video a day every day for 30 days here, and today I'm gonna leave you with a quote. The beginning of wisdom is the definition of terms. So if there's anything that is causing you stress about fitness, nutrition, life, whatever, get out the dictionary and define the term. Because there are people running around trying to boost their metabolism without even knowing what a metabolism really is. So empower yourselves, don't fear words, understand them, and until next time, I'm gonna drink me a calorie-free soda. See you tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>